going to talk specifically on how to use the people also ask section in Google, which is growing and pretty incredible. And we're going to uh, talk about how we can use those topics to create content around. I'm always showing you guys my, my favorite tool, SEMrush, which is a paid tool, and I love it for so many reasons. But I also want to show you some free ways to do things as well when you're just getting started. Uh, for those of you that don't know, when I got into real estate, I was completely broke, just broke, broke, broke. I mean, broke, eating top ramen every night. And um, all I had was a computer. And so I got really busy. Uh, hold on. Pa oh, I know. Yeah, I was still on. I, ha I just hadn't moved the screen yet. Thank you, Reagan. I'm not showing you guys anything just yet. Um, Okay, so um, anyway, so I just got busy using free things and then earned my way up to, um, to the paid stuff. So I like to go back to free whenever possible and show you guys the same thing. I'm drinking lots of water today. It's going to be like, I don't know, 118 in Vegas or something. <laughs> so air conditioners on high, drinking lots of water. Okay, um, so... On these Tech Tuesdays now, what I also want to do is if you guys have any specific questions, this is your opportunity to talk to me directly, to ask questions directly, to be coached directly. Um, big opportunity there as part of this, and, and especially because we're working in such smaller groups, most of our, the larger portion of our attendees on Tech Tuesdays watch everything back on playback. So. Um, when we're live, it's nice to be able to have that interac interaction. So you guys can always ask my opinion or let me let me know. But once I get started into a lesson, then it's going to be a little bit more challenging. So I'm not going to go through the Ballin method start to finish again. We've already done that now twice. Um, instead, I'm going to kind of bounce around and show you guys. You know, here's what worked for me this week, and and here's where this last closing came from, and here's what's happening new on the search engines today. And of course, I'll be adding anything that's a, an official lesson, I'll be adding to the Ballon method as well. So you can go back into there and, and break that, you know, break it down and see it in screenshots and videos and stuff like that, okay? So feel free to engage with me here. Okay, so people also ask section. Um, let, me, let me show you some things here. Let's look at Google. And we're going to type in a question, okay? So somebody give me an example of a question that somebody might ask related to real estate when they're on Google. It's got to be a question and maybe something that they would ask their real estate agent, something they would type into Google maybe when they're just getting started with their home buying or home selling process. Listings are so much harder to get on the web, so we got to be creating a lot of content for it. Okay. Uh, do I have to pay a closing cost? So let's do it this way. Let's do, um, all right, so when buying a home or selling a home, let's find out. Let's see. I'm going to type it in just like Reagan said. Do I have to pay closing costs when buying a house? Perfect. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Now, what I love is you guys just gave me a real deal example that we can build on, okay? One of my top uh, lead generating blog posts is how much are closing costs when buying a house in Nevada. And the other one is how much are closing costs when selling a home in Nevada. Man, I closed a great listing this year, one of my best listing um, commissions ever off of that blog post. And it just made everything worth it. It just, just that one, I mean, I've had more, but gosh, it just was... It just felt so good that I spent the time to write that one blog post or that one commission well paid for my time writing that blog post. Okay. So let's build off this question, okay? So here's the first thing that you can do. First, have, have any of you guys written this blog post yet? Closing costs when buying a home?
okay, if you did and you're not getting any leads on it, this is a good opportunity for you to go back and build on after today's lesson, okay? If you haven't, get busy. Oh, my gosh, you guys will thank me and thank me and thank me. I'm telling you, the buyer and seller leads that come in from this blog post are pretty incredible. Um, okay, so you want to rank on the search engines for anything to do with closing costs when it, when it comes to real estate, okay? So let's take a look now at the SERP, search engine results page, the SERP. Let's take a look at this SERP and, and, and evaluate what's on the page. Now, you'll notice here that there's no monthly search volume tracked for this search phrase. Um, and, oops, I know I've got my little thing up there. And there's no cost per click value. It's because it's, it's a unique long tail search phrase. But if you rank for that, you're, you're going to rank for how much your closing costs, how much does it cost to buy a house, who pays for what, you know, all that other stuff will start ranking in there as well. Um, so don't, don't get lost in the fact that it doesn't have any search volume because it may not for that exact phrase, but it's going to proportions around that. And if you create great content, you're going to rank for 100 keywords for that page, not one, okay? Um, even though you're not going to optimize it for 100, you're going to build on a bunch and it's just going to happen naturally. Okay. All right. So up here, what is this? You guys know what this is, right? Talk out loud if you're if you're home with me. Engage. Um, this right here, up top. See that little word right there? This is an ad. So this is a paid ad. Okay. So somebody is paying for that. Down here, these are earned in. Uh, these are bought in site links. So when you're running a pay-per-click ad, you can buy in these site links. Now, I've been teaching you guys how to earn those in for free. And everybody out there says there's no formula. There is a formula. It's simple. Get your page to rank in the top three on Google. Use, H2, use a table of contents from your H2 tags, which there's a lesson plan in the ballot method, and I showed you guys how to do that. And you'll get site links. It's, you know, it may not be guaranteed on every one, but it's a pretty good formula. Wow, thirsty, thirsty. Okay, um, next one, what is this one? What's this called? I'm going to wait for an answer before I give it to you because I don't want to, what's this one? There's no ad, there's no word ad. Okay, so if you click on this, when you see these, if you click on these little about this results, it'll tell you. So uh, Reagan was right, John was right. It is a featured snippet, and I have showed you guys how to earn that. So since it's a featured rich snippet, what position is this on the SERP? I didn't know I was going to quiz you guys today. I'm just checking to see how you all are coming along af after all. Yes. Tim got it right on the money. It's not the number one position. It's the zero position. It is the zero position. Okay. Um, uh, Rand Fishkin from Moz referred to it as the knowledge box, but it's the zero position. Okay. So you can earn this in by answering questions. So that's another reason why we use the people always ask. Now look what happens right here. People also ask. Have you guys played with this yet? It's incredible. Yeah, right, Reagan. It's the zero position at the very, oh, uh, underneath the paid ads. You, nothing tops the paid ads. So it's the it's zero position organic earned in. Yeah, I, got, I understand what you're asking now. Okay. So if you guys played with this, it's incredible, incredible, incredible. I sit there. It's so funny when I go to bed at night. I know I'm weird, but um, I have my cell phone out. And instead of scrolling Facebook, I'm on Google playing with the people also ask questions. And I'll just click and click and click and click and dive deeper and dive deeper. And I get all these ideas for what to create content around. And the next morning I wake up completely inspired and I get to blog it. Now, not just blogging, you can make videos around these, which I highly suggest, by the way. Um, I don't know if, if my friend Sandy is on these Tech Tuesdays anymore, Sandy Williams, but these are the kind of things you want to make your videos around um, since you're so good at making videos. Okay, 
who pays closing costs on a home? Okay, guys, here's exactly what you do. Go over to your blog. And uh, did you guys go through my lesson, the Watch Me Vlog lesson that I worked so hard on that is just like my favorite thing I ever made? It's five videos. It's in the Balan Method. Go, it's video screenshots. In the Balan Method, I made a full lesson plan on it. On YouTube, it's just the videos. Did you guys see that? If you have not watched that, please go back and go to the lesson plan and, and click on blogging and then go to the Watch Me Vlog. Exactly what I'm showing you today, this is what you need to learn because it's just the best possible way to create content for 2017 and beyond, okay? Um, what am I looking for now that I'm talking, out, talking about something else? Um, oh, we're just going to create a new blog post. Okay, so we're going to go to new, and I'm going to create a new blog post. And we're going to create, we're going to write a blog post to everything about closing costs, okay? So let's use Reagan's question. Do I have to buy, uh, pay closing costs when buying real estate in Las Vegas, okay? Phrase it like a real full-on question, okay? If you don't want to phrase it a question, you want to keep, I would keep your URL shorter though, and I'll show you what I mean by that if you, if you haven't taken that lesson yet. See here where it creates an automatic URL? Shorten that and change that to closing, maybe if this is for buyer, buyer closing, costs. Like three words. You don't need the full question in that URL. Okay. But here it'll fit, so you're fine. And if when you scroll down for your optimization, if it does not fit, if you're using Yoast or Schema and you have any of these kind of tools, you got to make sure it doesn't cut it off. Make sure it keeps keeps that it's all in there. Okay. Otherwise you can keep this title the same, but then you want to make sure that you change this and shorten it so that it's it fits in the box. You guys following me? Okay, for some of you guys, that stuff's basic. For some of you, you're just getting started. There's lesson plans in the Balan method on all of that. Okay, do I have to take closing costs? So now, in the old days, <laughs> 2010 blogging, um, 2015 blogging, people are still doing this today. It makes my skin crawl, and they're selling it to us. They're selling these cheap, generic, awful, canned, short blog posts to people, and real estate agents are buying it thinking they're going to get something out of it. It just makes me so, so sad. Um, so we used to just answer this question, do I have to pay closing costs? Um, as a buyer in Nevada, you can expect to pay blah, 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 closing costs. Um, the seller, you may be able to ask for some contributions from the seller, and you know, I may mention VA or FHA or how they work with closing costs. And it would be maybe 300 words, and it would rank on the search engines back in the old days. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. All right, so what I do instead is we're going to make a list of questions around this. So up here, we're going to write about, I don't know, maybe 300 words, just generally answering the question like I just said, okay? Um, in Florida, in Nevada, in Arizona, wherever you are, um, both the buyer and the seller have a certain amount of closing costs. As the buyer, you can typically expect to pay about X percent or between this range and this range um, when buying a house. You also can request that the seller contribute to your closing costs when you're writing an offer. So you're going to make this kind of like little description here. Okay, now we're going to start our, remember what we did with the, right, with the Watch Me blog series. We're now going to start some paragraph headings, paragraph, 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 paragraph headings, and we're going to put them in H2 tags, which I'll show you again in a second. And our, if we're using WordPress, we have Table of Contents Plus installed, I think it's called. I'm forgetting now, Table of Contents. Is that right? Table of Contents Plus? I don't want to tell you the wrong thing because I know we installed a new one recently. Um, yeah, I believe that is what it is. And it will create a table of contents out of the H2 um, tags. Now, you will then rank potentially, no guarantee, because you still have to get your site up and get exposure and all that good stuff. Once it's got some search engine visibility, 
you can rank for all of the words in these paragraph headings and get site links for the paragraph headings. So watch this. So um, do I have to pay closing costs? You might be able to bump Zillow even and take that, that spot. However, based on the way Zillow has that written and based on the fact that Zillow is so, so predominant in the real estate industry, the odds of bumping them out of that position for this particular blog post are really slim. So you're, you're going to be, your goal is going to be to show up down here. Next. Look at that. It's Zillow, Zillow, Zillow. <laughs> Dang. But locally, you've got more opportunity. Locally, they might show you instead of Zillow. So just go for it, okay? All right. Um, next, well, because I do in my market, so. Um, all right. So now, who pays closing costs on a home? You write that. Who pays closing costs? costs, closing costs on a home, okay? Now, you make this an H2 tag. You go like this, you go down, and you make it a heading two, okay? If you don't have, um, it, almost all WYSIWYG editors work like this. Whatever website you have probably does this. It doesn't have to be WordPress. If you don't have this little drop down, go over to your text, and right in front of the who pays the closing cost on a home, you put this. These little brackets. Are those called brackets? You can tell I'm not a professional coder. I don't know what my symbols mean. Um, H2. Okay, you do that. And then it makes it an H2 tag. So obviously if you're using the WYSIWYG editor, it's easier to do it that way. Now your answer is going to go here. And it will be in a regular paragraph text. Okay, see regular paragraph text. Answer here, and this answer can be, um, well, we'll come back to it, whatever length it needs to be. Okay, so next, you go back over here. Who pays closing on a, costs on a home? What is included in closing costs on a home? What is included in closing costs on a home? Answer, make this an H2. Okay. How much does an attorney charge for a closing? Now, if you're in an attorney state, how much does an attorney charge in a closing? Then you do that and answer. If you're not in an attorney state, it's, you're going to say something like, how much does escrow charge in a closing? Okay. And how you word these guys, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be exact to that question. Google's smarter than that now. So don't worry about those exact matches. Okay? These are just to give you ideas on what, how to create this blog post. Okay? So now watch this. Now we're going to click on this top question. Who pays closing costs on a home? Okay? Now, do you see who has the answer? Zillow. So you also now have the opportunity to not only earn the knowledge box, the zero position, you also have the ability to earn the um, people also ask. And if you notice, each one of these has a link to that person's website. Okay. Now remember, generally speaking, you've got to rank in the number one, two, or three position to earn any of these. I don't think I have site links or snippets for anything that ranks below a three position on Google. Okay. And now um, take a look. We got new questions. Okay. Now we've got things related to sellers, but here's one settlement fees. Now for some reason, I would not have thought to put that into my, I guess because I'm not out there doing real estate every day. Like you, like most, most real estate agents are, I have a team and I don't deal with that side of it, but, um, I get to spend all day in lead gen, which is fantastic. Settlement fees. I hadn't thought about that. So what is included in settlement fees? That can be a question. What is included? Whatever makes sense to you. Because you have to write the answer, right? Settlement fees. Oh, I forgot to turn on. Okay. Um, Okay, um, so now, oh, here we go. What are the fees for a mortgage? You can put that on there because those, those are also going to be 
include in your, in your cause? Okay. Are you guys getting the idea of what I'm doing here? Is this making sense? And then each one of these questions, if you click on it, you'll get more questions related to that question. Okay? So you'll notice two new questions just appeared. What is the lender's coverage premium? Are closing costs and settlement charges the same thing? Oh, genius question. Now I just gave myself homework. Darn it. <laughs> I already ranked on top, right? Rank for mine, but I now I want to make it better, you know. All right. Talk to me. All I see is crickets. I don't see anything happening in my question bar there. Just want to make sure that you guys are following this because it's so valuable. Oh, it doesn't matter. I spelled mortgage wrong. I'm not posting this. <laughs> this is just an example. But I appreciate You guys can always check my spelling on, on my actual published work. But we're not going to publish this one. This is just for ideas. Okay. All right. So now, guys, let me ask you a question. How long should this, how many words should this blog post be? Oh, the total blog post, how many words? All right, some of you, I'm sending you back to Ballon Method School from the beginning. <laughs> I appreciate you guys at least answering the questions. All right, so what do I tell you guys on average now? You can expect to write in a blog post. Some of you might be new too, by the way, um, so I certainly understand. If, um, if What do I tell you on page one now of Google? the top ranking keywords, about how many words are they? So a bunch of you said a thousand, and I would say a thousand is, uh, is about right as a starting goal blog post. I think you're gonna wanna write even longer than that, but I think that's a good starting goal if you don't have the data to compare it to. We're gonna go look in a second before we get hang up. Okay. If you're a beginner and you have the ballot method system, start at the beginning. I'm, I'm reading the question, sorry, or the people are typing in. Um, I'm a beginner, where do I start? You start at the beginning. So you log into the ballot method and at the very first um, lesson, at the very beginning, it says here's all the tools you're going to need, here's how to set up your dashboard, um, and here's, here's our goal, this is what you're going to learn to create, this is the action plan, this many blog posts, this many this, you know, that kind of thing. And then each lesson starts diving in to all of the how-to, okay? So some of the new people are still guessing the old answer, which would have been 300 to 500 words. That is no longer the case anymore. You've got to think bigger. You've got to go for bigger. The only time 300 to 500 words applies anymore is if it's a answer that that is a non-competitive, it's not competitive, nobody has this knowledge box, nobody has that zero position, you can see that, um, and, and it, nobody's answered it well on the search engines, or it's about a business or something local that nobody else is talking about yet, um, maybe you're just getting ahead of the curve, so you're one of the first ones to write about it, so I could write a 300-word blog post about the new Shake Shack in Summerlin and probably rank pretty well for that with 300 words until somebody bumps me out of there. I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked up Shake Shack. Maybe it's doing great. But I've, I've, I've always done well with restaurant blurbs with not a whole lot of words. But if you're going to write on real estate topics that are popular topics, you know, how to sell your house for sale by owner, how to restore a historic home, how to – who pays closing, you know, you've got to be thinking, like, like a thousand words plus plus plus. Okay, um, I I I I I start with a thousand, but I tend to go way over um, because it's so easy. Look at look at what we have here. Even free, we don't even have to think about the paragraph headings, right? Now, if you don't like to write, 
but you're comfortable on video, make each one of these a video. Answer it, make it a video. What if, what's included in closing costs? How about this? You don't like it to be on video and you don't write, go get your lender to answer these questions. Go get your escrow company to answer these questions. Okay? It, that's, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to, you don't have to do all the work. Um, okay, now when you're, when, after you publish this, this blog, or get ready to publish this blog, there are some things that you need to remember to do. And if you go back and, and watch the Watch Me blog series, um, you're going to see me do it all optimized. It was called action. Um, watch how the table of contents is created. So I'm clicking preview and watch what happens automatically. See these? Those were created out of these H2 tags. These are going to be your site links. Just to let you know, by the way. And sometimes it's worth making these shorter so that you can get a, I think I've gotten as many as four site links, maybe five for my horse property one because I made the words really short here and they fit underneath that description. Um, but the calls to action is going to be, um, you're going to insert a, a, an IDX carousel in here or, or uh, uh, see the most recent listings in Las Vegas, click here. or get a free consultation about buying a home in Las Vegas. You know, you're going to put, those are your kind of call to actions you're going to include. This one's for a buyer. On the seller one, you're putting, find out how much your home might sell for in state, today's market. And you're offering a home value estimate or you're offering call or text me to, to um, sell your house or subscribe here for the monthly real estate market report. Those are going to be your call to actions on your, on your buyer side or on your seller side. Okay. Um, my the one I told you that I closed that was recently that was so good. Um, what they did is they Googled how much is how much are closing costs from selling a home, and then they on there I had a call to action that said find out how much your home is worth in 15 seconds or less. They clicked there, filled out my little home valuation tool, and then my system my lead cultivation system texted them and says are you are you actually wanting to sell a home? And they answered and said yes, and that then I scheduled an appointment with one of my agents to go out there. Okay. Um, and so, um, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a, a real estate widget, like a, um, a, you know, homes for sale, a little, a little list of homes for sale here, then they're being sent to the actual homes for sale. And then there's a forced registration through IDX. If I want to offer them an online consultation, I could fill out, I could have them a link to a little scheduling calendar. I could have a, 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 a WooFoo form or something like that, or uh, Gravit um, Gravity Forms in WordPress I think is free. Google Forms is free. So I could put a little form on there where they put in their name, you know. I have all kinds of different things. Uh, Listings to Leads has a ton of landing pages. Um, lead Pages has landing pages, but then I have a bunch of stuff on my own site. So everything's a little bit different. You, you'll have to kind of go through maybe and look at, um, look at all the lesson plans and the valid method to see what I'm including and where they're going. Um, so, yes, you're going to put pictures in here. Guys, today's lesson, I wanted to make sure was on how to get those topic ideas. Today, we don't have time to go into all the optimization, calls to action, images, videos, all of those are so, so important. Please log on to the Valen method. That's why it's there. It's got some amazing updates that I've put in there recently. And um, there's uh, the Watch Me Blog lesson plan is covers every piece of this, every piece of it. How to build the table of contents, where to put the pictures, where to include video, how to embed Yelp reviews, how to embed Facebook posts. Um, calls to action, internal linking, um, how to use SEMrush to determine how many words your page needs to be, because we were going to do that today, but we're out of time. Um, I, I mean, I cover everything. So please, 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 t the, the, the weekly Tuesday, Tech Tuesdays are here for accountability. We're here kind of to show you what's new, to get you engaged, but your Balan method is your school. I mean, that's your, like, that's what has everything in it that you could possibly imagine, okay? So I'm going to encourage you guys to go back in there. And today I was just covering the topics. That, that's, that's really it. So get back in there. And um, we can work more on this in the calls, um, of course, in the future as well. But let, 
log into your lesson plans and then ask me questions and I'll know what more to bring to you on Tech Tuesdays or to add to um, the ballot method. And um, all right, so you're going to shoot for a thousand words and then I want you to grow it even beyond that because that's where, you, that's where we really need to be thinking about these types of, um, of quality. And all you have to do to get to a thousand words is do, do a 250 word article do one a week, and at the end of the month, you have a thousand word blog post. Okay, don't make it harder than it is. Just time block for the little portions of the blog. You don't have to write the whole blog in one day. And before you knew it, if you did this one of these a month, you would have 12 great blog posts related to real estate, buying and selling a home that, that, that are really going to bring you in some good leads. Okay.